respected chairpersons and dear delegates and my teachers. I always thought three things are difficult in the world. One is speaking after the sumptuous lunch. That's no problem. You can sleep. The second thing is climbing the Mount Everest. I have done Manasarovar, Kailas Parvata, Parikrama. But the third most difficult one, challenging, is speaking in front of your teachers. And that too, the Himalayan experience, like Trimurtis of Telangana, that is uh, Dr. Somraju, Krishnamraju, and uh, yeah. So th that, that's a very challenging one. So I'm extremely grateful to you all for having invited me, sir, and also the president of CSI Telangana chapter, Sayyadji. Uh, I'm going to speak, dedicate my lecture to Dr. Raj Tandon, who's call, called as the father of pediatric cardiology in India. And he was such a great teacher. Almost he was a teacher to teachers, all like how Dr. Krishnam Raju said that he was taught by him. This is a class where you can see that Dr. Raj Tandon is sitting here. A teacher, a person who's sitting in the front bench, bench never forgets his teacher. But the students sitting behind in the last bench, you know, the teacher never forgets because of their pranks. And I was an exception. Though I was a front bencher, I always used to be adored by my teacher and that has continued and that's God's blessing and my parents' blessing too. Raj Tandon, I was co-examiner with him and then he would meticulously examine every patient, every child and write down the findings and he expected the student to give the same findings. Otherwise, he would give only 2 out of 10. And being no, someone in between, neither too modern nor too old, I would look at the two marks and I said, oh, poor child, girl is going to fail. And I would put 8. So 8 plus 2 would be 10. That is average 5. So passing. So that's how, you know, I worked with him. And it was such a pleasure. He was meticulous and he gave me his book on uh, clinical pediatric cardiology. And it is still there in Jadeva library. So the journey of pediatric cardiology has been amazing and fascinating. Every little step taken for the heart of the child is a giant leap towards the humanity and the children are the future of any nation. Leonardo da Vinci is my hero and I have found from the left article to the right article, he was the first one to find out the atrial septal defect and that too in the 15th century. And after that, Maud Elizabeth Abbott, you know, she was called as benevolent tornado. Though she was a pediatrician and um, a cardiologist, she dedicated all her life as a pathologist and she was the first woman to come out with a class of congenital heart disease with the thousand cases of congenital heart disease then in 1936. And after that came Helen Tossig, who is called as the mother of pediatric modern cardiology. And she is the one, right from Hopkins, she went to the Boston children to ask the Grossman, I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Gross, who had dilated, I mean, ligated the PDA to make a British, I mean, the shunt. But then he said, look here, my lady, I'm here to ligate one and not to create one. So he insulted her and she came back and then she made her own house surgeon Alfred Blalock to make that shunt and you know that is famous as the BT shunt and all over the world millions of children have been saved with that. So if you look at the stages of history as said by James McKenzie, there are three stages in the history of every medical discovery. When it is first announced, people say, oh, it's not true. Then a little later when the truth has been born in, on them so that it cannot no longer be denied. They say it is not important. And after the importance becomes sufficiently obvious, they say that, oh, it is not new. So friends, whatever you are going to hear from me, you will say that it is not new. You already know it. In 1925, William Osler, he used to teach the students inspection, palpation, auscultation, and contemplation. Those four were like compass for the medical students in the past. The present, 
we have ECG, X-ray, echo, angio, CT, MRI and in the echo you have 2D, 3D, 4D and what not. And in spite of that, we miss the diagnosis and ultimately the patients go for the window shopping and hence, you know, it's very important to know the different stages. And I'm sure Dr. Krishnam Raju and Som Raju, they remember somewhere in 1992 when Joseph Parlov came to Hyderabad, it was a CSI conference, he took a bedside clinic for 1000 cardiologists and so meticulously he discussed that at the end of the discussion, Dr. Joseph Parlov's diagnosis was better than the echo diagnosis given by the echocardiographer. And that is the signature, the autograph that I took and I was blessed to have his preface written to my book. So Joseph Parlov himself wrote and that time he was more than 80 years and then it was just before his death. So friends, among the greatest achievements in the cardiovascular medicine in the past century have been the advent, development and refinement of invasive diagnostic and therapeutic modalities of cardiac catheterization and the catheter based intervention and hence Kurnard called in his Nobel uh, speech that the catheterization is key in the lock and intervention starts from the womb and you know that when Krishna was telling how to enter the chakra vyuha, then Abhimanyu was saying yes, but today we do the fetal echo and we find out whether the child is capable of coming into the chakra vyuha of today's modern day. And whatever may be the anomaly, the fetal echo can distinguish very well and I have found even the intrauterine infection vegetation in the uh, intrauterine life. So that's the greatness and we can do the karyotyping, amniotic synthesis and then find out whether there is a genetic defect and then we can intervene. So what is intervention? Intervention is to come between order to stop, settle or modify. But in cardiology, it is to come between the disease and the death. Literally, you prevent the child from dying or you give a normal life to the child. But only thing that you must know when to intervene, how to intervene, why to intervene. And the true intervention started in 1966 when Rashkin and Miller demonstrated the role of balloon atrial septostomy and the response, the audience, you know, some of them had the admiration, the others were horrified. How can you rupture the intraatrial septum? That's how people were shocked. But then this is static balloon uh, dilatation that is Savitra Shivatsa, contemporary of Raj Tendon and that's how we follow both atrial septostomy. How the atrial septostomy helps as a safe bridge to surgery, this is an example of 16 years old child with TGA with the same balloon I am doing the pulmonary stenosis dilatation as well as the PFO dilatation. So single balloon you are improving the saturation and then also bringing down the risk. And the riskiest balloon dilatation is in the newborn babies and that too when they are born with the high drops. And you can see here that it's a pinpoint pulmonary stenosis and hardly any flow in the lungs. First I have opened with the 1.5 millimeter balloon, then 2.5 millimeter PTC balloon and then with the mini tie shack balloon. So though it is riskiest, it is literally life saving. So you can do the RA is the upper limb approach and make a loop and go up if you have a difficulty because in children the angulation is very narrow. So in the past if the children had a severe infundibular stenosis like this in tetralogy have hardly any flow and those children used to go for the surgery BT shunt but today we dilate and put the L, uh, RVOT stenting thereby the severely hypoxemic child is saved and goes for the surgery. So absent pulmonary valve is one subset of tetralogy of fallow. Whenever that happens, there is a to and fro murmur, systolodastic murmur and then these children 
you know, they will have difficulty. In the past, these children were left alone, but later on they would go for the RV failure. But today, after the surgery, if there is absent pulmonary valve and the RV dysfunction is going to occur, we can put the transcatheter pulmonary valve replacement also. Now, not only the pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery stenosis, peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis, they carry very high risk post-surgically. They will not come out, we, are, we cannot wean them off from the ventilation. So in such cases, we can do the balloon dilatation and also do the stenting so that they become fit for the surgery. Moving on to the aortic balloon valve plasty, we have done a plenty of cases, more than 400 cases with a 96% success rate and this child had 244 gradient across the aortic valve and we opened. And in the mornings, Dr. Somraji was telling that somebody is permanently pregnant. This lady, achondroplasia was full term pregnancy, the anesthetist was not ready to give anesthesia for the caesarean section and she had 178 gradient across the aortic valve. So we paid myself and obstetricians, we contributed and I did the balloon dilatation and in the evening she had the labor pain, we shifted and she never came for the follow up. She was asking me and I was asking her. So next time when she came was she was pregnant again, only then she came. And this is a 14 hour old baby, uh, infant, the first uh, uh, stillbirth was there and then when this patient was born, the child did not cry, they ventilated and then, you know, within no time they realized that there was a pinpoint aortic stenosis. Dr. Janki shifted the baby to me and the whole baby was bloated because hydroxyphetalis, you know, it's a 100% death and the pinpoint aortic stenosis I opened with the uh, crossed with the Shinobi guide wire and then with the PTCA 3.5 millimeter. Now the child is 10 years old, very mischievous, mother can't even hold. And this is the pinpoint aortic stenosis and that is the valve. And after five years, I redilated. This is Jim Locke. When I worked with him in Boston Children, the 20 years back, he was the first one to do the intrauterine intervention. Now Venkateshwar Rao is doing here in uh, Hyderabad itself. So. Not only that, you have heard the TAVI, all over people are doing the transcatheter valve replacement and that has become the order of the day. And when it comes to the inferior venicular block, you can see that there is a membrane and the flow is not there, this is the collateral. So we punctured with the uh, broken balloon needle and then dilated with the balloon and then the distension went on. And not only that, we have a special cook stents for the IVC itself. They are not like the aortic stents and they are very uh, yielding and you can put the double uh, stents also. So this is how the IVC block can be opened. You all know pulmonary embolism, high mortality. First thing we started doing was giving the streptokinase to dissolve the clot and now we have the IVC filters. Not only the IVC filter, you can put them and then you can retrieve them when it is not required. Now this is the patient who had uh, a uh, caesarean section and then the child did not recover, the child was into failure and it was referred to me at the age of 15 days and when I did started with the systematic examination in the um, hypochondriac region, this is how it was. I didn't know what it was and then the child also had vegetation in all the four valves that was an intrauterine infection and then I treated that and when we did the uh, CT, this is the volume rendered image, you can see that bigger than the heart, there is a hemangioendothelioma of the liver and in the past they were injecting alcohol and what not. But then what I did was I kept the ADO2 device to close the hepatic vein so that whatever I inject into the tumor will not go to the heart, then injected the foam gel into that and then completely regressed and now the child is six years old and doing very well. In the past, the teachers used to teach us, put all your eggs in one basket and that is not correct. A congenital can be associated with the acquired rheumatic heart disease and this is the patient who was treated as rheumatic fever with atrial fibrillation, pulmonary edema, put on the table for the emergency balloon dilatation for the mitral stenosis and when the pulse was not there, I told my professor, sir, this is coarctation. He said, if you can't puncture, come this side. I said, I can puncture, I can do it, sir, but this is coarctation. 
So be Indian, touch the feet, and you'll never miss the coarctation. And this happened to be a tight coarctation. I opened the coarctation first and then did the balloon dilatation for the mitral stenosis. This was a 40-day-old baby referred from the medical college. And my associate, Dr. Chitra, said, Ma'am, I'm scared to raise the uh, uh, thing. I asked why. The blood pressure was 220 by 110. And that is because the coarctation was so tight. And because of LV dysfunction, they were adding the inotropes. So never give inotropes until you rule out the cause for the LV dysfunction. So we opened that and now we have got the biodegradable stents by, which can be used even in the infants and they later on that can be tackled. And not only that, if the coarctation is associated with the duct, you can put a covered stent like this. And along with opening the coarctation, if there is a rupture of sinus of valsalva, in the same sitting we can also close the rupture of sinus of valsalva. So combination and permutation, post-surgical uh, aneurysms, they also can be tackled with the covered stent. So our work can be hand in glove with the surgeon and we can give a better quality to the patient. So this child was treated as rheumatic fever in a medical college with the steroids because there was a systolic murmur and then the patient developed convulsions, bilateral upgoing toes, two press, and then when it came, I saw that there was a middle thoracic syndrome. The whole mid thoracic iota was obstructed, open. This also similarly, they made it as pulmonary embolism. In fact, it was a mid thoracic syndrome. Now coming to the shunt lesions, be it atrial septal, ventricular septal, ductus arteriosus, AP window, coronary fistula, pulmonary AV fistula, ventricular, atrial tunnel, Whatever the shunt, we don't have to send them for surgery. We can close all of them with the device. So I was the first one to do the device closure in South India in 1998. And that is with Kurt Amplatz in 1998. And that's how the devices are stitched, the peri thing. And then we, uh, AST can be closed, the VST can be closed, this is the dextrocardia. The three VSTs are closed with a single device by me, whereas my mentor used to put three devices. So this, the economy is in our country. I was the first one to put the Garbude uh, shunt also closing with the ADO2 devices and with an excellent result. Post-surgical residual shunts also can be closed with the ADO2 or any of them. Dextrocardia, very easily, within four, four and a half minutes, you can close with the device. And if there is a VST is very big, pH is there, you can do the fenestration and take the simultaneous thing. And this is how you can see that a huge 24 millimeter device is put in this girl who would have gone for the Isen Mengar. Today she's able to get married and lead a normal life. We can also do the hybrid surgery in the children. So PDA, you know very easily, excellent results we get. Uh, no surgeon will touch this girl with the barged pole also, but we can prevent this, uh, what to say, kinking by keeping a stiff guide wire. This is how the AP window can be closed and AP window, you have to see that it is away from the coronary artery, then only you close. Rupture of sinus of valsalva successfully can be closed. Dr. Krishnam Raju remembers this patient. I was the first one to close the IOTO left ventricular tunnel. And that time, Kurt Amplatt sent three devices free of cost to me. And then, you know, I asked him to give the suggestion. He said, nobody can give suggestion. Use your clinical acumen. Good luck. Because 35 years ago, he was with the Lily High. And surgically, they had closed with the Avenol plug. And then later on, we close the IOTO ventricular tunnel also. And this is how, you know, we say at the end of the tunnel, there is a light. But here you can see that at the end of the tunnel, there is a device. This is the first case to be closed like that. My mentor uh, used to close the coronary AV fistulas with multiple coils. And here you can see that in 2013, this was on the top of the list of the top 20 publications. And here you can see that fistula hardly coronary is seen because of the coronary steel after closing with the ADO2 you can see it so well so this is the IOTO atrial tunnel and that also you can see that it is so uh, difficult to cross you can't make the AV loop so from the aortic end retrograde I closed it with the ADO2 
So pulmonary AV fistulas, sometimes they require multiple because they have uh, multiple fistulous tracts. So post Fontan, this is Fontan, when he came for the Madras medical mission, the uh, collaterals and MAPCAS can be closed. So you all know the renal artery can be stented, but also you must remember that if the kidney is not functioning, the function is less than 20%, you can, hypertension is not controlled as in this four years old child, you can put the coil and get the blood pressure under control. So this is a bullocard injury. The patient had uh, aneurysm at the tip of the iota and the surgeon was not able to do the surgery and there was no landing zone. So I closed the two vents with the 2 ADO2 with the successful result. So friends, 2D, 3D is there, but today what I'm doing is the 4D echo and the 4D echo is literally like looking into that. This patient had the non-compaction and Swiss cheese VST, everybody had left, but then I did the 4D. It was actually a double chambered RV with the non-compaction. I did the balloon dilatation and the child is doing very well. So marriages are made in heaven and in, in India, consanguineous marriages, fortunately we have AST, VST, pulmonary stenosis, PDA as the top uh, uh, conditions and all of them can be literally cured. And I came to uh, Nizam's institute when Som Raju was there to see the PTMC. Today I have done 340, uh, uh, 3,400 cases of juvenile mitral stenosis and this child had orifice area is 0.2. And this is how it is very difficult in our country. So to conclude friends, these were the great guys, the King, the Mullins and Mike Tynan, that is the Taishak balloon that we have and the precision is the key here and accuracy is very important. In the past, the classification was given by Richard Van Pra, Van Pra, the Stella Van Pra and then the Mullins came with the Mullin sheath and all that and then Kurt Amplots was the one who gave the device which opened the whole lot of things. It's so attractive that when, whenever something very attractive, youngsters are attracted by that but then uh, there can be a crash. So remember, all attractive things are not that testing safe. You have to have the experience, a sound, basic physiology, pathology, the clinical knowledge, and on top of that, you must have the humane concern for the children. So we can say with some assurance that although the children may be victims of fate, they will not be victims of our neglect. And that is my motto in life. I love the children and more than 9,000 children I have treated and I'm so very happy. The first children, they have become doctors, engineers and then wherever I go, they recognize me. So thank you very much um, Telangana CSI for giving me an opportunity and I'm so very grateful to be here in the pearl of, I mean the city of pearls and he said the pure gold, I say sir you all have the pure golden heart and that's the reason though I belong to Karnataka you have invited me, thank you very much for your patient hearing, thank you.